Before we end the podcast, we have our main topic. We, we talked about it in the beginning, tokenized ETFs. And this is inspired by an article on, uh, on Coindesk here from the crypto industry. It is a company called Arca Funds who wants to launch a tokenized T-bond. And so I wanted to detail this a little bit and, and then, you know, Herwig, hear your thoughts on this. And listeners, you may have heard some various attempts to launch a Bitcoin ETF and some of these other kind of crazy tokenized options before. But on, on the news of ARCA funds, I, I think it does make sense to talk about some of these tokenized products and, and the steps they've taken, as well as some of the future outlook for tokenized public products. So as described in the article from Coindesk, which is in the description, just like anything that we've referenced in the podcast, the goal for ARCA funds is to tokenize a portfolio of U.S. Treasury bonds that they can then sell to the public. And treasury bonds are some of the safest investments in the world because they're bonds sold by the U.S. government and are rated AAA by all of the the world's rating agencies. And these bonds are highly sought after by institutions and governments all around the world because of their long-term stability and and the opportunities to de-risk your investments. However, treasury bonds are not as easily accessible as buying stocks or, or some of these other assets. And in fact, in many cases, you can't actually even buy them from a broker and for international investors and central banks especially, there's even more hurdles for, for these firms looking to de-risk their investments, especially with sizable investments in these asset classes. So firms like ARCA Funds have created products that look to leverage tokenization to track and manage these assets. And so by working with the SEC, the firm is looking to list their treasury-backed fund on the NYSE or NASDAQ, which would then be available for international jurisdictions via the OTC markets. And so when we take a look at launching an exchange-traded fund, it's actually a a, a relatively new concept, very new, if you will, because the first one only went live in 1993. And so as with all publicly traded assets, ETF creation falls under heavy regulation and scrutiny from regulators. And they, they traditionally have held a very skeptical view on ETFs for new or obscure assets. The process for filing for an ETF consists of, of filing forms N2 and N8 with the SEC, which, which is not only just filing the forms, but it consists of many, many months of discourse between the issuer as well as the regulators, in this case being the SEC. And likely a lot of money towards attorneys as well. A ton of legal fees as well. Yeah, that goes without saying, right? And so they look at a variety of factors, the SEC that is, to to determine if the fund is fit to list as an ETF. But the most relevant ones to talk about today for a tokenized fund consists of the reliability of the technology. So ARCA Funds was actually able to avoid SEC criticism regarding the quality of the assets because we're talking about one of the safest investment vehicles and a backbone of the U.S. economy. However, many risk factors do persist regarding the unproven blockchain technology at this scale. We've never before used blockchain to transfer assets of billions of dollars before. So to, ask, to answer these questions, the firm is working with San Francisco-based issuance platform TokenSoft and will be leveraging their institutional-grade ERC-1404 protocol, which we've discussed on the podcast many times, which enables shareholders to interoperate with their entire Ethereum ecosystem with the added functionality allowing the fund to enforce transfer restrictions for the R-Coin tokens, as they will be called. These tokens also, it's noted, can be redeemed for cash on a quarterly basis. So potentially this will be the kind of the medium of exchange. And then every quarter you'll be able to exchange that back into cash. I don't want to distract from this, the topic, the main topic here, Kyle, but I do want to mention that I also was reading that the executives behind the ARCA fund even see blockchain as such a useful solution that they one day see their ARC coin tokens possibly being used as a way to pay for goods and services. Wow. Of course, there is not meant to be a lot of volatility behind this because, again, it's pegged to basically AAA T-bonds. Interesting. And then I guess, yeah, it would pay off the... the that's fascinating. Very, very fascinating. Like I said, then it would pay off dividends based off of the, the coupon or if it's, if it's a zero coupon, then it would just... Yeah, huh, fascinating. 
that's that's I guess something for the future if they can get this passed. Let's 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 get that yeah, passed first. Exactly. It seems like they got bigger goals than just listing this ETF. <laughs> yeah, I agree great. with you. You know, <laughs> pretty, pretty big, big goal, goal. <laughs> just to list the ETF. So let's the start filing there. also noted risk factors such as limited liquidity in the tokenized markets compared to traditional markets, which is understandable, and it might lead to higher price volatility just because of the fact that that there's a premium or discount applied. In addition to risks such as a failure in the Ethereum network or slowdown that we've seen in the past. And to me, Kyle, that's really the only reason why I see the SEC would reject this ETF. It's obviously not about the underlying asset. It's more about the fact that can blockchain or tokenization create new uh, control issues, volatility issues, other issues that the SEC hasn't been able to fully consider. And therefore, you know, that's, that could possibly be the only reason that I see anyway. Uh, that would you know scare the SEC and prevent the listing uh, from occurring. Yeah, I totally agree, and and it, it's Arca Funds clearly is aware of of some of those risk factors, and I think they did a good job of noting that in in their filings. And then when we look at the case of a Bitcoin ETF or something like that, there's been a constant back and forth with the SEC and many of these issuers with the goal of making Bitcoin investments accessible to the public outside of clunky wallets and the solutions that that have been been tried before. But so far, each and every attempt has been denied, totally denied, due to the lack of clarity regarding the risks of market manipulation of Bitcoin and, and also enforcement, according to the SEC. So with Treasury bonds, you have none of those asset risks, just as you had pointed out. So instead, you're, you're, you're pushing the SEC to allow for tokenization as more of the infrastructure behind the asset, allowing for, for a, a ease of use and transfer between investors. So, Herwig, you know, do you see this as the first step towards institutional tokenization and adoption? It's a great question, uh, definitely one that you kind of have to analyze. You know, let's say we took a spectrum of, of ETFs. From a risk perspective, as we pointed out, T-notes are considered highly secure, non-volatile, liquid, and, you know, you really can't find a better uh, asset uh, out there. So therefore, there's a really low chance of market manipulation risk. Now, if we go over to the other side of the spectrum, we would see assets with a high risk of market manipulation, usually due to lack of infrastructure, a lack of disclosures, and the lack of ability to enforce and regulate the asset. You know, this, this concept of an ETF doesn't just apply to Bitcoin. It's been tried with startups. It's been tried with penny stocks and many other, you know, as you mentioned, obscure or new use cases. And this is a, a real issue to the SEC. Their only job is to protect the public. And so this is their way of controlling to make sure that this is this ETF is a safe investment for the retail public. So if you're asking me, is this the first step of institutional tokenization adoption? Well, I think we're going to see that in many, many forms and use cases as we talked about across the show. But if I had to rephrase your question to say, is this the first step towards tokenized ETFs? Then I would say absolutely, because from the SEC's perspective, if an ETF based on T-notes can't be tokenized, what asset could be tokenized in an ETF that was tokenized today? So basically what I'm trying to say, if they end up rejecting the ARCA funds ETF, it will be interesting to see why the SEC said they rejected it to get a clue as to what is needed for tokenization infrastructure to be robust enough for the SEC to start approving a tokenized ETF. And once we see that sort of T, T uh, uh, bond ETF approved that's tokenized, I'm sure that will start to pave the way slowly for more tokenized ETFs across that spectrum. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's fascinating. I like what they're trying to do here because they're almost trying to burn the candle from the other end. When you look at a Bitcoin ETF, you're trying to apply traditional ETF structure to a digital asset. This, in this case, they're trying to apply a traditional asset and leverage this technology to do it. And it'll be interesting to see how the SEC responds because the they can't just kind of copy and paste the same rejection no. for this because it's a totally different set of rules here. Um, now they really have to, to set firm on how they feel about blockchain technology and a bunch of these pieces. I can see where their trepidation comes from because it is a, a serious kind of genie out of the bottle effect that once Absolutely. you allow one, it, the whole thing blows up. Um, and so I, I'm fascinated to see how this goes. One thing's for sure, unfortunately, it does seem like they tend to take forever in this process. Like every time one of these firms says they're close, it means that they're going to get another round of feedback from the SEC and it's going to take another eight months before they can file again and, and, and hear back again. Um, it is relatively unclear to me and I think it's unclear to a lot of people 
what exact boundaries the SEC has. It seems like they can kind of just keep indefinitely pushing this this back and giving more feedback. So we'll see. Um, I, I have a lot of hope, but uh, you know, I think that that we know better than to, to get too excited yet. Regardless, I love the I love the strategy here, and I'm excited to see what happens moving forward. Yeah, I think you gave a great summary there. At the end of the day, the BTC ETFs are about validating the Bitcoin asset class. In this case, we're talking about using tokenization for an ETF, an entirely different scenario. So very curious to see how the SEC eventually, as you said, <laughs> responds. So we will be sure, of course, to give that update on the show. So keep on listening. Hope to see you next week. And of course, thanks for listening.